Hello and welcome to another video by Matthew Gaming Vids. In this video we're going to be fighting the fourth boss in Dragon Soul Raid using the Looking for Raid Finder system. This boss is called Hagar the Stormbinder. But before we start talking about tactics with her, we need to get there first. And to get there you need to click on the Red Drake which will take you to the top of Rumrest Temple and then from there you need to click on the portal what says Eye of Eternity. I say this because this two portals there, one what takes you back down to the where the Drake were where you got on and the other one takes you to Eye of Eternity and you don't want to click the wrong one. So once you're at the Eye of Eternity what you need to do is click the globe in the middle. This will set off a change that makes portals appear and monsters will spawn from them portals. Once all them are dead, more portals will come for, I think it's about three or four more portals and then the boss will drop down. You'll know it's the last portal because it's a mini boss that spawns for the last portal. This mini boss has about 8 million HP but doesn't do anything special so it's just a tank and spank fight. The other trash that spawns here is basically easier except from the majors. The majors on the first and second and fourth pull will put down circles on the ground. These circles are blizzard moves and they will sometimes stun you as well which can be dispelled by anyone who can dispel magic effects. But the blizzard move doesn't really do much damage in the Lucky for Raid system, so it shouldn't put much of a threat. Although the trash does need two tanks, the boss only needs one tank, but as it's the Lucky for Raid system, we're still stuck with two tanks, as tanks in this patch do a lot of damage, so we wasn't really losing any damage. And also, just because it's a pug, you need to be wary of the healers might not know what they're doing, the other tank might not know, and so if one of your switches and the tank dies, then it's game over. But this way, if the tank dies, the other tank can just pick up straight after him, and then you might even down the boss that way. In this portal fight, you need to take out the healer first, which is the one what looks like a shaman. Try to fight them in the middle. That means that the AoE abilities or some of the classes, they will be able to kill them a lot quicker than just fighting three at each side and then after having to run to the other side to kill the other three. Also, remember to mark a monster as skull. This normally means that they will focus on that target. This just stops people from going for every single monster and really not killing any until the last moment where they all die at the same time which just makes the damage from them a lot higher than what it should be. Same with the other fights here, the trash is all the same and it gets boring at the end apart from when the mini boss comes. Well, when you're about 20 seconds into that fight it gets a bit boring as well as there's no moves that you need to either avoid taking or dodge completely. And if they were, that would make the fight a lot better, I think. So this is the last pack here and the next portal that spawns will be the mini boss. What you want to do here is pull him off to the side so when the mini boss dies and the boss juts down from his little floating thing you don't pull him straight away and the tanks do get aggro before the DPS this just stops that the DPS or healer or whoever gets aggro first doesn't die straight off the bat because nobody would want that as you will only lose out on a DPS or healer or even a tank but I didn't know this at the time and I just thought that it would just spawn at an end of the, of the room and you had to pull him to the centre. But now that I know this, 
I will be doing this for the raid. So tactics for the boss. What you need to remember is that attack from the middle and range should stand out as far as possible because in the transition stages you need to move out of the center ring and into the outer ring. But for the first phase, sometimes orbs will spawn around the room. These orbs will start channeling a beam to one person. Try not to let the beams cross, but it doesn't really matter if you do. These beams slow down melee and I think ranged attack speeds. So if you are DPSing, you need to counter this by using some sort of move like I think vanish works thin death might work and I think bubbling might work if you're a paladin but I'm not quite sure to this effect so the second phase is one of two things one of them is the eyes one and the other is electricity we got the electricity one first so I'm going to talk to you about that right so a new monster spawns. What you need to do about this is kill it near to one of the totems. Once that monster is dead ne near one of the totems, that totem will explode with electricity. Now what you need to do is make a chain or all your group runs together to the next one. Now what you want to make sure you do here is follow the tank. The tank will lead the way to the next totem and the electricity bounces off you, hits somebody else and then comes back to you. If there isn't enough people around you, that will not happen and the electricity will just die and you need to do that again. What you want to make sure you don't do is all stack up together as that will just make the damage unhealable. But it doesn't really matter in the looking for raid finder as that damage has been reduced by nearly 50 to 60 percent. Now the second phase 2 you'll get is the frost one. What happens here is that the boss will go invin invincible again and then about four like, frost orb things will spawn around the room. You need to kill these but at the same time the boss will be putting out a frost barrier which will be spinning around the room clockwise. If you stand in this you will definitely die so you want to avoid this as much as possible but as you'll see in this video most of the DPS do, do that here and they all just die which you really shouldn't as it's very noticeable. I don't know if it's noticeable on lower settings but I can see it perfectly fine and it doesn't move that fast. It moves even slower than my run speed. So, and also, this is getting a nerve in this patch which has just come out today that makes him, makes the frost go 15% slower. So, in other words, people will be walking here now as, and shouldn't die at all because it's really avoidable and if you don't avoid this then there's something wrong with your keys or mouse buttons. Once you've done this phase it will go back to phase 1 and also the boss will be stunned for a few seconds and take additional damage. This is where you want to pop heroism. Also once this is finished the boss will go into an in range mode for about 10 seconds it does a lot of damage here so you need to be careful and heal the tanks appropriately. This damage is so high in fact that I think I nearly die a few times from the hits. I'm not quite sure if this is avoidable or not but I did pop a cooldown I think but it still hit very hard so if you've got any other moves that can avoid taking that damage or even want to split to another tank at this phase it's very likely that you need to split damage with the tanks taunting off each other every few seconds 
but once his weapon, or her weapon should I say, stops looking like an electricity bat, she will just attack normally again and the next phase will be coming soon. I think it's about 40 seconds or 50 seconds from each one. The range timer here is only hit if enough DPS die in the lightning or frost phase. Which really they shouldn't, but as you can see here, most of our DPS is dead here. But then again, we did do a lot of bursts at the start, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Thank you for watching this guide. Please remember to like, comment, favourite and subscribe for more videos from me. Thank you and goodbye.